All right, so here we are. It is now time to review the 10B and the 12B. If you're looking for my cutoffs, I will have them, a cutoff prediction video, a little bit later. By the way, uh, some of you have been asking, how is your dog doing? And this is my dog. And he's doing really good, just so you know. Uh, he had a very serious health scare um, earlier this year in the summertime. Uh, almost lost him. His bladder almost burst. And uh, lucky to still have him. He, uh, he uh, had bladder stones and it blocked up. He couldn't pee. And so his bladders almost burst and they had to do special surgery and then they messed up the surgery at one location. He had to be rushed to a different hospital. And uh, all told, it was quite the ordeal. So uh, he's doing really well. Um, if you'd like to donate to his fund, uh, it's on my community page posts. Um, I'm still paying about $9,000 more that I owe on that surgery. It was very expensive. If you'd like to say thank you to the channel uh, for the solutions or something, if you want to consider donating to that, it would be much appreciated because uh, it's going to be a while before I can pay that off. Okay, so 2025 AMC 10B problem one, 12B problem one. The instructions on a 350 gram bag of coffee beans say that proper brewing of a large mug of pour over coffee. I think what's bad about this, not a hard problem, but there's so many little words like proper brewing, you know, of a large mug of pour over coffee. You're trying to pay attention to all these little details just in case there's some weird one in it, right? And so you're like, it requires 20 grams of coffee beans. What is the greatest number of properly brewed? And you're like, wait, what was pro Okay, all right, I guess, all right, we're okay. But you're like a little bit like, wait, <laughs> I don't know when you're reading it. Large mug, but did they say large mug? Okay, so these are, okay, okay, all right, all right. They're not gonna get us with these properly brewed large mugs of coffee that can be made from the coffee beans in that bag. I would say the overall <laughs> challenge of this problem is simply reading comprehension and that you're hyper vigilant to not make a mistake. So you like keep comparing all the words. Are they trying to trick us somewhere or trap us? And it's just normal, but they write it like there's something hidden here. <laughs> so 350 grams, it takes 20 grams uh, to make a large mug. And so you're just gonna go ahead and take this 350 divided by 20, knock off the zero, 17.5 you're only able to get 17, but it's the hypervigilance that probably takes this problem an extra 30 seconds because you just don't wanna make a mistake on your first problem of the test. Let's get to problem two. Again, so as a reminder, my predictions of what I think the cutoffs will be will be in a separate video, but I would say it's probably pretty comparable to the A. Uh, can't go much better than that right now. So 2025 AMC 10B problem two, 12B problem two, Jerry wrote down the ones digit of each of the first 2025 positive squares. So one squared, two squared, three squared, all the way to 2025 squared. You're not stopping at 45 squared. That's not what they're saying. Make sure you gas that difference. Uh, so it's one, four, nine, 16, but only the six, 25, but only the five, 36, but only this, the six. What is the sum of all the numbers Jerry wrote down? At first, you might be like, uh, if you haven't done any number theory at all, it might seem like, who can possibly do this? But what you have to realize, realize is that every single number that ends in one, for instance, will always end in one when you square it. Every number that ends in two will end in four when you square it. Every number that ends in three will end in nine and four will end in six and so on and so forth. So you don't need to do all of them. You just need to know what the sum of the first 10 is. And you can ignore tens because they're all going to contribute zero to the ones digit. So we'll just write these out. One, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, uh, eight squared, 64, 81, um, yeah, 49, 64, 81, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, the 0. So at that point, every group of 10 will have the same sum. So I'm just going to go 1 and 9 is 10, 4 and 6 is 10, 6 and 4 is 10, 9 and 1 is 10, and add one more, it's 5, which is very interesting that it's 45 because 20, 25. Uh, so the sum of this is 45. 
and that's every 10. How many 10s are we going to get? We're going to get 202 times 10 plus the same first five right here, which is 10, 25. So we're going to get 45 times 202 plus 25. The way that I would want you to do this is to split it in your mind to 200. And so if you do 200 times 45, it's like uh, 2 times 45 is 90 times 100, it's 9,000, right? And then plus 2 times 45 is 90, so you have 9,090. Um, yeah, you could also make it 90 times 101, which is great. Also, lots of little things that you can do like that. 90 times 101, of course, is 909 with a zero. Uh, and then you'll add 25 to end up at 9115. Let's get to problem three. Continuing on now at the 2025 12B problem three. What is the value of this expression where i is the square root of negative one? Again, if you had my small notebook class, we did go through, and some of them, I think all of them, uh, we went through binomial expansion from chapter 14 of Intro to Counting and Probability. We went over just that one part, and I talked about how in binomial expansion that you can adapt that concept to other things like this. It's essentially a practice of choosing things to pick out of each parenthesis. And so it might not have been those classes. It might have been like either that or my Saturday class or, or an AMC 12 class. But I did it in one of them. I have so many classes, it's hard to recall which one had what. Anyhow, you're always going to have an I. So one of the ways that you could do it, you're going to have an I in every one of these is going to give you I to the fourth. If I took an I in three of them, like I took this I, this I, and this I, I would have to take negative three from there. And if I did that with the negative 2 and with the negative 1, like let's say I took instead, I took this i and I took this negative 2 then. So you're always going to take two of the three i's and then whatever's left is the other number. This allows you to more quickly expand this whole thing using the same concept they taught in chapter 14 of intro to counting and probability. You just have to adapt the concept to think about its potential. So then what else can we say? Um, if I took two eyes only, like let's say I chose, or uh, one, yeah, two total eyes. This would be one, this is the other, and in the other two parentheses I took the constants, negative two times negative three, that would be six. So this would give me i squared times six plus, then I would have uh, negative three times negative one, which is three, and negative two times negative one, which is two. In other words, think about it again. These are like bags that you're grabbing something out of. I can only grab i or negative one. If I grab all four i's, it's this one. If I grab three i's and one constant, I can do that with every one of the constants, and then the other ones would obviously be i's. That's this term. If I grab two of the i's and two of the constants, that's this term. And finally, if I only grab this one i, and then I take the negative one, the negative two, and the negative three, that's going to be negative six times i, minus six i. So now, what is i cubed? It is negative i. So I will have negative six times negative i, that's positive six i, it's going to cancel that. i squared is negative one. I've got 11, it's minus 11, this is positive 1, 1 minus 11, negative 10. You can actually either lose time here or gain time versus other people if you're good with this kind of expansion. Um, you use it a lot when you're looking for like the coefficient of a plus b plus c plus d to say the 17th power. And I'm looking for a to the 14th b cubed, and I want to know the coefficient of this term. And it's basically going to be 17 choose 3. I will take of the 17 parentheses that look like this, I will choose three of them to give me a b, and all of the others must give me an a. And you can do very similar things with things that are not binomials at all. 
but you learn the basic level of the concept in that part of the book. Let's get to problem four. And on to the next problem in our rapid fire set, 2025-10B, problem four, 12B, problem three. The value of the two digit number AB in base seven, you should immediately write seven A plus B. This is what you write when you see that. Now, if you don't know what base seven is, you haven't done intro to number theory yet, I will have a new class for this book starting the first week of December. We go very in depth and cover everything in the text. If you'd like to be a part of it, there's a maximum of eight spots and two of them are already taken. So reach out to me through my channel if you'd like to be a part of that group. Uh, six spots left. So how does this work? Okay, think about it as base seven is just like base 10. If I give you 813 in base 10, you might say that's 800 plus 10 plus three. All that we mean by base 10 is that I am multiplying by the base squared with the digit plus one times the base to the first plus three times the base to the zero power. That's what the base is. You do the same thing in base seven. It's just there instead of tens, you would have sevens and you couldn't have eight because the digits in base seven cannot get any larger than six. So that's what's going on here. So it must be a times not 10 to the first, but seven to the first, and then you have B. So seven A plus B is going to equal the value of the two digit number BA in base nine. What is A plus B? So this is gonna be nine B plus A. Again, converting to base nine, this is the tens place, but it's not tens, it's nines. So it's the nines place and then the ones place. So all you're gonna do at this point uh, is probably subtract A to get six A equals eight B. I'm going to go ahead and divide by two on both sides. So I'm going to get 3a equals 4b. The easiest thing to do would be to let a be 4 and b be 3. But will that work if I let a be 4 and b be 3? Meaning this side's a multiple of 3, then this side has to be also. This side's a multiple of 4, so this side has to be also. Let's see, would, here's what you do. You go, well, I do have my answer right here, right? But would we just go, oh, I got it, I add it, I'm done, I'm on the next one? No, because we make foolish mistakes. And so what you have to do is clarify, or not clarify, you have to prove to yourself that you haven't made a mistake. This is what the smart students do and how they avoid silly errors. So the way that you're gonna check it is you're just gonna see what this is. What is four times seven plus three? It's 31. What about 34 base nine? That's three times nine plus four, also 31. We can confidently say the answer is A. Let's get on to the next one. And the final problem of this rapid fire set, 12B problem five, positive integers from 2025. Uh, X and Y satisfy the equation 57X plus 22Y equals 400. What is the least possible value of x plus y. Um, they do sometimes put language like this when it doesn't really matter. So uh, let's just kind of get a look at what happens here. 57 is 19 and 3, 22 is 11 and 2. Neither of those are in common. We can't really play a game of factorization or anything like that, at least not at this point. Um, if we want the least possible value of x plus y, then we'd probably want this to take up most of the damage. So if we put it at eight, it's too big. If we put it, oh, why are we making it even and even at all? If X is not even, we couldn't get 400 because this is an even number. And if X is odd, this will be odd. You would never get an even result by adding an even and an odd. Therefore, X is two, four, six, or eight. Who do we appreciate? I don't know. Uh, two, four, six, or eight. So you try eight, but it can't be eight because eight's an overshot. You would try six next. If you try six, you're going to get 342, but your gap to 400 is not a multiple of 22, so that's not going to work. 
This is for x equals 6. If I go to x equals 4, I get 228 and 172 is not a multiple of 11 because 1 plus 2 minus 7 doesn't equal a multiple of 11. Finally, you'll go to x equals 2. It has to work or we're in trouble. You get 114. Your gap is 286. And the 11's trick for multiplying tells you that this is 11 times 26 which means if I borrow a 2, it is 22 times 13. So x is 2, 57 times 2, 22 times 13, 2 plus 13. It's a little bit scary because you're over here on the far right and it asks for the least possible value. But if you told yourself the thought that x is going to have to be even, I cannot, this has to be even because that's even. There's no way around it. You'll notice the odd doesn't change it. Odd times an even is even. This number being even, this number has to be even or you cannot equal an even sum. So as uncomfortable as it is at the very end, give yourself logical justification for everything that you did and you know then it has to be E. Let's get to the next one.